access to vaccines in a bid to, to end the COVID-19 pandemic is also one of the big talking points at this year's UN General Assembly in New York. The UN Secretary General looking to world leaders, global health agencies, civil society and the industry, among others, to discuss this important issue. At the same time, the health department in South Africa says over 8 million doses of the Pfizer vaccines will be destroyed at the end of next month. Let's chat about this now with Stavros Nikolaou, who is a strategic trade senior executive at Aspen Pharma Group. Stavros, thank you so much for your time uh, this evening. I mean, the UN Secretary General saying while progress has been made in supporting countries to increase their vaccination rates, the number of people fully vaccinated in low-income countries it remains considerably low and it's concerning. What were some of, you know, the key talking points as you attended some of the sessions? Uh, Stavros, I'm not sure if you are able to, to hear us. It's, it's Bongiwe. Okay, sorry. Ap apologies. I can hear you now. Apologies. All right. I'm, I'm no in worries. Uh, New York. I'm in New York City. Yes, I'm, I know. I'm in you New were... York City. I... Not, not without its challenges, I might add. So I'm feeling a little nostalgic. I... Uh, missing from home with the load shedding. I can imagine. Okay, I can only great. imagine. Thanks very much. Uh, Thanks very, thanks very much uh, for this opportunity. Um, there's been extensive discussion at UNGA, particularly at the margins of UNGA, um, around uh, access to medicines in general. Of course, vaccines uh, continue to occupy primary space. Uh, reason being, of course, that we, we learned from the COVID-19 pandemic that Africa found itself at the back end of the queue um, there was a lot of outrage, and I think that outrage continues to be expressed um, at fora such as the margins of UNGA, hmm. uh, that we should never ever again as Africans suffer the same fate when we are at the back end of the queue. So there, there's, a, there's a, certainly a growing realisation um, that for, for, for health, global health security and also for social and political stability globally, that that picture needs to change. And uh, I, I attended and spoke at a session this morning that was hosted by the World Economic Forum. It was under Chatham House rules. But uh, the various stakeholders were involved in that, uh, you know, all the key stakeholders were involved in that session today. And uh, I've seen the strongest possible conviction that we need to now set up, establish and sustain um, African manufacturing capacities so that the continent is more self-reliant. And this does not only speak to vaccines, incidentally. This also covers diagnostics, medical devices, and of course, other medicines as well. And all of this is also happening against the backdrop, you know, of, of, of news here at home that, you know, there are around 8.5 million doses of the Pfizer vaccine that are said to be destroyed. Some then saying that it's not an issue, um, you know, on the one hand of accessibility, but it's also an issue of a message that needs to also be driven towards those that also have, you know, to, to take these vaccines. Uh, look, I, th I think if you have your own production capacities and they're sustainable, I mean, I keep emphasizing this word sustainable because mm -hmm. you need to sustain any manufacturing capacity for any product. It's, it's no use, you know, you create capacity during a public health emergency and then you never ever use it again. So the key word here is sustainable. Now, if we had our own manufacturing capacity on the continent early enough, um, I, I think we would also probably have been able to manage our demand and supply a little better uh, than what uh, is, is coming through at the moment. But it all comes down to we should never be caught again. You know, Aspen has invested significantly in sterile capability, which inter alia allows us to produce vaccines. But we need to put that capacity to good use, and it doesn't begin and end only with vaccines. There are a number of other 
uh, disease entities and what we call non-communicable diseases such as diabetes, uh, various forms of cancer where we don't have accessible medicines or medicines are not accessible or affordable. So we need to tackle this with uh, vigor now that the opportunity presents. You, you know, sort of the, uh, the there's some inertia to, uh, to, to COVID-19. And before you know it, if time passes, and this is a comment Dr. Ngozi, the WTO heads, made today in the session. You know, we need to act now while this topic is you know, has got political momentum. So we shouldn't lose this opportunity. And I'm very pleased to say that um, in, in all of these sessions at UNGA, that message is coming across very clearly. But in, in summary, uh, we need to sustain our production capacities on the continent. And we also need to look at what are the other disease entities, cancer, diabetes, and others, where our, our people, our citizens on the continent do not have access to treatment. And at the same time, the, you know, there's also talk, as, as you've alluded to as well, political stability and even the, the, the UN Secretary General talking about, you know, a need of continued political support to ensure that there's equitable access to, you know, all kinds of, of, of medicine. But do you get a sense that there is political will for the sustainability that has come out strongly from the talks that have been taking place there? There, there certainly is that political momentum, but of course, the key with all of these things lies in the execution. And I think the next, you know, the coming weeks will tell um, whether we are able to turn that political goodwill, of, of which there is immense goodwill, I must say. I keep stating that we need to turn it into actionable and implementable plans. But I am getting a sense that we are looking to do that. Uh, as, as a you know as a global community because I think the realization is that uh, we, we've seen just how destructive um, a pandemic can be I mean we're living with the aftermath of of um, of, of COVID-19 the the economic fallout so and I, I'm, I've been in New York for a couple of days now and I can tell you the crime rate has skyrocketed in New York uh, the unemployment has increased. So it's not just a South African phenomenon. So if you don't get global health security, and if we don't manage any future pandemic better than the one that we, we've just, uh, or are still experiencing in COVID-19, it does threaten global economic and social stability. And we just simply can't afford that. I mean, you can see what happens when you get social and political unrest. You can see what the consequences are. So I think many lessons have been learned, but are we going to implement those lessons? I think that's what we've got to look out for over the coming uh, weeks and months that lie ahead. Indeed, implementation is going to be key. I'm going to let you go. I know it's 12.46 where you are. Quite a long day ahead that you still have there. Thank you so much uh, for taking the time to speak to us. That is uh, Stavros uh, Nikolaou, uh, Strategic Trade Senior Executive at Aspen Pharma Group.